Hello and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we will learn what the Quincy Tourism Department has in store for the new year. Director Dagny Ashley will be joining us in a little bit. First, though, we take a look at the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, we have some light snow falling. It is 35 degrees. The snow will continue on and off throughout the afternoon. Could accumulate maybe one or two inches by this evening. Temperatures remain in the mid 30s. Snow wraps up this evening. Temperatures drop off into the upper 20s and a relatively quiet weekend coming up tomorrow. We'll have some gradual clearing throughout the day. Still rather mild highs in the mid 30s, even warmer on Sunday. Rain arrives Sunday night. Temperatures into the mid 40s. The rain will continue into Monday morning and then clearing later in the day Monday. Rather gusty winds too with highs Monday in the mid 30s. Again, some light snow, 35 degrees in Quincy right now. Checking the news for you today, 47-year-old Brian Walsh of Cohasset continues to be held without bail after being arraigned on charges that he killed his wife and dismembered and discarded her body. At his arraignment in Quincy District Court back on Wednesday, prosecutors outlined a series of Internet searches allegedly conducted by Brian that included how to dismember and dispose of a body, how to remove blood stains, how long DNA lasts, and how long a body takes to decompose. In a statement earlier this week, Norfolk County District Attorney Mike Morrissey said investigators believe they have enough evidence to convict Walsh of murdering his wife. Mr. Walsh will be transported to the Quincy District Court for arraignment on the charge of murder. Additional details of the investigation and the evidence in support of those charges are likely to be presented at arraignment, but will not be disclosed at this time. This marks a second allegation of domestic violence homicide in Norfolk County in less than a month. Our thoughts are very much with the family these crimes have left behind. Walsh has pleaded not guilty to the charges, does remain behind bars until his next court appearance set for February the 9th. The case will likely be moved to Superior Court in Dedham. Well, there are now two candidates for the Quincy Ward 4 City Council seat. James Devine and Joel Buenaventura were the top vote getters in Tuesday's preliminary special election, which eliminated Matthew Lyons and Sharon Sintolo. The finalists will now face each other in the February 7th final special election. The winner will serve out the remainder of the term through the end of the year. During our live coverage back on Tuesday night, both finalists pledged to work for the people of Ward 4. A whirlwind. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things, a, a huge learning curve. Yep. Um, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people telling me different things and what to do and try and digest all of it. Uh, it was hard. Uh, not, not hard. Uh, well, it was hard. You know, a lot of time, a lot of effort. I uh, met a lot of people, a lot of really interesting people. And also, um, I got to um, get more involved already uh, with all the different um, parent teacher conferences at uh, the parent teachers uh, for. Lincoln Hancock, uh, I'd like to get more into with um, Southwest and uh, Delicate Ace, all those. I think, I, I, think, I think it goes back to that same sort of question. People want to be notified when these big projects are going and people want to at least have their say on what's, what's going on. And I think, I think there are some projects where we were under COVID, so that kind of sort of happened and maybe the voice wasn't heard from what the neighbors and surroundings got. So I think there's a little unrest about that. The last day to register to vote in the February 7th election is January 28th and early voting will take place on January 28th and then January 30th through February the 3rd at Quincy City Hall. Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch says he will be responding soon to a proposal from the City Council to institute a residency requirement for new city employees. Mayor says he appreciates the spirit of that proposal, but says it may be unrealistic given the worker shortage across the country. I've definitely given it a thought, and, you know, I, I probably would 20 years ago be all for it, mm. uh, but in today's environment, I think it's, it's difficult. Um, you know, we do call for residency lists for police and fire, for example. So there is some of that going on. Uh, but it's, you know, in many of our teachers are Quincy kids that went through the system and went off and got their education and got past their, their boards and, and, uh, now are teachers. But 
for example, there's a lot of teacher categories that's challenging to get teachers for, particularly in the science areas, sometimes the foreign language areas. So, um, And going forward, the employment issues looking around the country, and we're not immune to it uh, here in the Boston region, uh, is challenging. And uh, I just think that could be problematic in us uh, filling some positions over time. Now, maybe there's a there's a clause in there that says first preference as a resident. After that, um, if we can't fill it, then then we go outside. So, you know, again, I'm we're looking at the language, and I certainly appreciate the spirit of of the resolve. Uh, but we will have a response to the council fairly soon. Quincy Ward 2 Councilor Anthony Andronico and Ward 3 Councilor Ian Kane co-sponsored that residency requirement proposal and it was supported by their fellow councilors. The mayor also questioned whether the requirements would meet constitutional muster and has asked his legal department to investigate. Three men, two of them from Quincy, are facing charges of scamming an elderly man out of thousands of dollars. Police in Arlington say 21-year-old Peter Gilhaney and 18-year-old Patrick Gilhaney, both of Quincy, and Richard Gilhaney from Randolph told an older man in Arlington they could fix his front steps for $200. Police say the men returned several days later, took out the entire staircase without the man's permission, and then told the victim it would cost him $6,000 to repair. The victim wrote a check for part of that amount, and it was cashed. The victim then contacted police, who posed as customers, and arrested all three of those suspects. They now face charges including larceny and destruction of property. It's our check of news for you today. Coming up, we sit down with Quincy Director of Tourism, Dagny Ashley, and give us an update for the 2023 season. That's next. Welcome back. I'm sure folks in the uh, tourism and travel industry are hoping for a more normal 2023 season now that the pandemic is waning. I'm certainly uh, sure they're hoping for that right here in Quincy, which, by the way, you might not know, has its very own tourism director. And she joins us. Dagny Ashley is stopping on by to give us a little update on how things are going and what's coming up. Hi, Dagny. Happy Hello. New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you for having me. Oh, pleasure to talk to you about some fun stuff, right, for fun a change? Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, my department's the fun department. The fun department. <laughs> Actually, your department was created right when the pandemic hit, no. <laughs> unfortunately. So you had a big challenge yeah, uh, it's right all out of the blur gate. now. Yeah. Are, is it better? Yes, much better. That's good. Much better. Excellent. What uh, did 2022 kind of look like in terms of uh, it folks coming to It was definitely better was it? Um, than yeah. the last two years, obviously, yeah. for um, obvious reasons, right? Um, but last year we did well. Mm -hmm. We did well. I think we're, um, you know, getting close to 2019 numbers. Okay. Um, I think another year and we'll be there. Really? But okay. definitely um, 2022 was much better. Okay. Was 2019 kind of the benchmark? Was that like it a really good It is kind of the only year? benchmark we can use right now. Yeah. 2020 was not too good. Obviously, yeah. Um, and 2021 seemed to have a little increase, but definitely 2022 showed uh, better numbers for some, visitors. Some promise. Yeah. yeah. And 2023 will um, increase, and then they, they're hoping um, with all the data that's out there that 2024 um, will be fully back to where we were. Okay. So who's coming to Quincy? Uh, why are they coming? And uh, what are they saying about it? So at the Welcome Center, we had, our, we had five ambassadors there um, working from um, the spring all the way through um, November. And they gathered a lot of data from all the visitors that were coming through the Welcome Center. So we pretty much had every state. Um, I think there was only one state that we didn't, um, and I won't mention. But um, we pretty much had every state um, visit the Welcome Center, folks from every state, mm -hmm. and um, probably about 15 different countries. Wow, okay. Yeah, so, um, and they loved it. They loved it you know, speaking with the visitors and residents alike that come into the Welcome Center about different things that are happening happening in Quincy. Um, but yeah, they come for different reasons, history, heritage, mm. family, friends, mm -hmm. um, coming to see all of, you know, Massachusetts or all of New England, and they heard about Quincy. Um, so that shows that our marketing and our promotions are working. Right. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, they're excited to get back out and start traveling and um, visit cities that are, you know, um, 
outside of the capitals of you know like Boston so they yes. come visit other cities but um, yeah they're excited to get back out and start traveling again I know that's been the main effort right is yes. to gonna get Quincy on the map of Boston visitors and yes say, you know yes. hey we're here here's what we have um, have you uh, seen progress in that that goal we have and we spoke with you know some of the hotels in Quincy and they also said they're doing really well um, 2022 was much better. Mm -hmm. um, so 2023, we're, what we're going to focus on is getting those motor coach companies back into Quincy. Oh, okay. Um, we want to, you know, those buses that are full with 45 folks that are coming on tours mm -hmm. um, into Quincy and visiting the National Park mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, going to restaurants and staying in our hotels. Um, one motor coach can infuse um, up to $5,000 a day into local economy. Wow. And that's what we want. We want to get those motor coach travelers back. We want them to know it's safe, um, lots to do and see in Quincy, and um, also international market. We're going to put some more efforts into the international market. It's currently around 70% you know, back, but um, they're hoping by next year and 2025 international will come back almost 100 percent okay um so we're going to just focus some of our attention to the um domestic uh, motor coach industry and then also the um international okay yeah i was going to say the motor coach folks would be more local right but new england tours um no they no? come from washington oh, really um okay. philadelphia new york yeah yeah okay. they do they do multi um, day trips. Mm -hmm. It's not just, you know, overnight. Sometimes they're, you know, out on the road for six, seven days. We get motor coach companies from Tennessee, um, it's Alabama. Long, it's a long yeah. bus ride. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's what we want. So yeah. I, I plan, I'm going to a trade show next month um, and I have over 25 appointments with um, tour companies mm -hmm. um, that are not just New England based, um, that are, you know, pretty much all over the um, country. So. Yeah. I know during, um, 2020, the first year of the pandemic, the goal really was to have um, staycations, right? Yes. To really get reach yeah. out to people who yeah. are right here yeah. and maybe don't know what yeah. Lindsay has or to offer. Or within a hundred mile radius, okay. right? Yeah. You know, a, a uh, car drive. Or yeah. 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 Um, did it work? It did. It yeah. did. And now we're seeing more, you know, um, folks from 500 miles plus. Okay. So it's definitely increasing um, and people are getting back out on the road again. And I mean, even in your own personal travel, you see that the airports are busy, the you know, train stations are busy, mm. things like that. So people are getting back out, in, back up, back out to travel. Yeah, um, that particular year, as I recall, the uh, Adams National Park uh, did not open. Yes. Then it was uh, limited openings for the next it couple is. of years. Yeah. Yes. Do you know if it's going to be a full, op full on opening yes. this year? It yes. Is. Okay. Yes, they were open um, last year fully yep. as well. Okay. And the Adams National Park Visitor Center is still currently open right now. Yes, actually yes. that's new. They're, they're staying open year-round yes. at their visitor yes. center. I mentioned the Welcome Center. Uh, for folks who don't know, where is it and what happens there? The Welcome Center is directly across the street from the Adams National right. Park on um, Hancock Street. Mm -hmm. And um, we decided to call it a Welcome Center to welcome folks into Quincy um, as well as residents, welcoming residents into the um, Welcome Center. So um, we have ambassadors in there that, um, that tell you know, the story of Quincy. We have um, free walking tours. They can do Hancock Adams Common and the um, Hancock Cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, those are free tours, walking tours. Um, there's an audio um, guide available. Yeah, we have and a there's graphic also we can a show folks about that. Yep. Yeah. Um, while the visitor center is open, you can yep. just grab a handset and you can listen to um, the handset. And it comes in about um, eight different languages oh, okay. as well. Um, but when the visitor center is not open, there are beacons all around the common and the cemetery that folks can um, scan a QR code and they can walk through the tour themselves. It's oh, a self-guided tour. Oh, okay. So they actually take the handsets with them from the Welcome Center? They can when okay. the Welcome Center is open. Okay. And if, they, if it's not open, they can use their um, iPhone or Device. Android. Okay, and just about everybody's walking around yeah, with those in their yeah. pockets. Now, and it's so. pretty, you know, it's been a pretty um, mild winter. M um, much so, yeah. Cross our fingers. Right, yes. And so folks can do that now. They can walk along the common um, as well as the cemetery and do the tour themselves. Okay. With All their right. phone. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Um, speaking of the digital age, you have yes. an app. We do. Yes. We have an app for that. <laughs> of course. Of course you do. <laughs> Tell me about the Discover Quincy app. So the Discover Quincy app um, 
encompasses uh, attractions, hotels, restaurants, all the events. If you want to stay up to date on all the events that are happening in, in Quincy, yeah. um, you can download the app to your iPhone or your Android. Um, and that updates directly from our website. Okay. Uh, so discoverquincy.com? Yes. Okay. So you, you can actually go to our website and um, download the download app. Download the app from there. Okay. And is that kind of a real-time tool? Decade? It is a real-time tool. Okay. So on our website, it's connected to our website. Yeah. So if we had a new event today, it automatically gets transferred to the app. Good. Okay. Yeah. Are there actual paper guides still available? There are. Okay. People still love paper yeah. guides. So we this past year, we did a new visitor's guide. Um, that's also at the Welcome Center. Okay. And um, if you go online, you can download the, the guide um, to your computer. All right. And um, if you would want one mailed, we'll mail one to you. Whoa. Okay. Yes. Really old school. Because people <laughs> still want that copy. Um, so folks call us from, I've gotten the last um, request I got was from um, um, Illinois. Hmm. So people. Was it Quin Quincy, Illinois by no, chance? Oh, no, okay. it wasn't. Um, but yeah. People still want that guide mailed yeah. to them, you know. They well, want I know that. travelers like to keep a like a folder of yeah. you know the, yeah. the trips that they've been on, so there's something to keep it as a keepsake yeah. as well, because they're there are they're nicely illustrated with some beautiful color photographs. It is, it yeah. is. It's an. I'm, I mean, I'm pretty biased, but I think it's a pretty good um, visitor's guide mm -hmm. that you know you can keep on hand and um, keep on a coffee table book. Right, right. Um, it's 2023. Yes. Quincy 400. Is only two years away. I know. <laughs> I can't believe that. Don't say that. Yes. What can you tell us about uh, preparations for the 400? Um, I know the mayor's office is, um, has a committee and they're working on that. Um, we were working on that prior to the pandemic yep. and then it slowed down a little bit. Um, but as far as updates, um, the mayor's office is working on that and they will pull me in as soon as I am needed. Okay. So um, I'm sure more to come on that. Okay. Yes. I'm mistaken. I can't tell. <laughs> secret. No. It's a secret. Well, unfortunately, um, a lot of communities would have had their 400th in I 2020, know. Plymouth yes. being the biggest one, right? Yeah. Um, so do you think uh, that's going to have an impact? They gave us a lot of um, um, good pointers from okay. um, programming their events yep. um, during a pandemic. Um, a lot of them obviously went digital on Zoom and things like that. Um, but yeah, we're in contact with all of the 400 communities and we have um, we used to meet regularly, quarterly, um, and I think it's been a few months since we've all spoken. Um, but we, we um, keep in touch with all the 400 communities, mm -hmm. okay. like Weymouth and Salem yes. and Providence Town and all of the folks that are going to be having their 400 um, celebrations. Right, okay. Uh, New administration now um, at the, in the state house. Yes. Uh, does your office work in conjunction with uh, with the state? Well, we work with the state office of travel and tourism. Yes. Okay. And they haven't um, converted over to a new um, executive director as of uh, yet. Okay. All right. So as of yesterday, we were on a webinar with the Mass Office of Travel and Tourism, and it was the current um, tourism director. So no changes there yet. No changes there yet. Okay. Um, but yeah, they're definitely you know pro tourism. So. Um, the um, lieutenant governor was the um, mayor of uh, Salem, Salem yeah. and that's one of um, my colleagues as the tourism director in Salem. Oh, okay. Yeah, so great fan There's already a connection there. There's already a connection so, and there. And Kim Driscoll spent a lot of time campaigning she in Quincy. She did, actually, yeah. she did, um, so but she's a great map. advocate for tourism, yeah. so Are there, I see great um, things. state grants available that you'll be uh, seeking out this There's year? There's always state grants yeah. available um, through the Mass Office of Travel and Tourism, as well as the Mass Cultural Council. Yep. And they offer grants for arts and culture and events, and um, the Mass Office of Travel and Tourism offers grants for marketing um, and other different initiatives that um, destination marketing offices um, would be mm -hmm. able to apply for. Yeah. Um, so do you think Quincy needs another hotel, Dagny? Do you think it can support I, another hotel? I think it can you support do. Yeah, yeah, another hotel, definitely. Um, currently we have five hotels, and I think definitely, um, you know, just seeing the influx of travelers that are coming in, um, starting to increase year after year. Yeah. And if you think about, you know, prior to the, you know, pandemic 2019, um, there, you know, there wasn't a lot of vacancy, right? right? Um, so I think once we get back to those numbers, I think it could totally support another hotel. Okay, because I know yeah. there was talk of one maybe up at the Granite Links uh, yeah. complex, uh, maybe one 
South Quincy as mm -hmm. well. So, okay. Yeah, I just saw in, you know, Boston just opened like, I mean, two or three hotels yes. in the last few months. So, um, they're seeing the support for more hotels, I'm sure we can. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, some uh, current events, so things that are coming up very soon. Like yes, the Winterfest. Winterfest. Yeah. I know, right? Um, so, yeah, that will be coming up on February 20th. Mm -hmm. It's from 2 to 7. Um, all the events will take place on the Hancock Adams Common, as well as the Church of Presidents, and I believe some um, events will be inside City Hall. But they'll have heated tents outside. Yeah. The Welcome Center will also be open, okay. so folks can stop in there um, and pick up a copy of Visitor's Guide. Yes. Uh, appropriately, it is President's Day. Yes. So the city of Quincy has, to own, has to own that, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Family friendly. Yep. There'll be food, um, different live entertainment and events. It'll be a fun day. It's the start of school vacation week, uh, so yes. a lot of folks will be looking for something. I'm sure they will be. To do, yeah. Yes. Um, as you mentioned, heated tents because um, the Birds of Prey show from the Trailside Museum yes. is coming back. That yes. was hugely popular. It was. Yeah. But I, I, I would um, tell folks to go online and um, make sure they um, get tickets. Okay. But, th but it's free. It is free. Okay. So they're free tickets, but you need to go online to make reservations for some of the events. I see. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, Birds of Prey, there's a Rainforest Reptile Show, mm -hmm. Mad Science Fire and Ice Show, uh, Ice Sculpture Demonstration by the Ice Man Craig, mm -hmm. Sasha the Fire Dancer. Yes. She's, she's been great. in parades uh, for the past several years and yeah. is, a, is a big attraction, I know. Um, there'll be some live music. Yes. Right? There'll be two patriotic winter laser shows. Mm -hmm. Tell me about those. I can't tell you about those. Why not? Because surprise, people have to go there. <laughs> no. Um, John does a great, great job of, of incorporating new ideas. John McDonald. You're talking yes, about, yeah. John McDonald. He's the events coordinator for yep. the city. He does a great job of um, adding new events um, um, and new entertainment every year. So, um, yeah, I think the lineup that he has this year is just phenomenal. Mm. It's more than they had last year. So I think folks are going to be super excited once they go to the Winterfest and okay. see all the different events. So where are they going to shine the lasers? Um, he hasn't told me. Oh, that okay. Yet. Yeah, right. he doesn't. He doesn't tell me those little details. He tells me what's happening, when it's happening, what time. Get people to come down <laughs> there. Um, but yeah, and and also the museum will be open inside City Hall. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. What's the exhibit in there now? Um, the um, generals. The oh, generals. Okay. So pe folks can go in there and learn all about the um, um, the eighteen generals that hail from Quincy. Okay. So. And yeah. Then and that will be open. It. That's free. And then walk over to General's Park. Correct. Right. Yes. And see the actual yes. um, and statues. And we're praying for a beautiful, nice, sunny day. Yes. Well, February the 20th, anything could happen. Yes. Um, but it's not. It's going to be <laughs> sunny. <laughs> Let's hope exactly. What's coming up after that? Um, I also just got um, news of a new event that's happening with um, the Q Arts Gallery. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that starts February 3rd, and it runs until March 12th. Okay. And it's at the Q Arts Gallery located, located on um, Hancock Street, a few doors down from, um, from the Welcome Center. Yep. Um, and this is an exhibit um, that they paired up, Q Arts paired up with Quincy High School students, which I think is fantastic. But it's an exhibit that's going to be displayed um, featuring student work from production spanning over the last 10 years. Hmm. So I just got news of this information yesterday. Um, so I invite folks to... Um, look on our website at discoverquincy.com, um, but they can also go to the Q Arts website. Yep. So it's quincyartma.org. Okay. And they can find out the times because I think they're only open on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, it's at a volunteer the Q Arts. group. So yeah, it is a volunteer yeah. group. Okay. But I invite them to go check it out. It looks like it's a really nice exhibit. Okay. Uh, opens February 3rd, runs through March 12th, and is it a, I think it's a fundraiser, isn't it, for the drama club? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a great way to showcase, yeah. uh, you know, current and former students. I know. Um, as it well. is. Maybe um, develop some new membership for the Art Association at the same time, right? And expand on, you know, arts and culture in Quincy. Yes. So I like it. It's yes. a really nice exhibit. Yeah. Has and the they'll be open during the um, school vacation. Right, yeah. Has the arts gallery, having the arts gallery there helped? Yes. It has. Definitely. Really? They're a great partner. 
Um, there, we send folks over there all the time. They send folks to our welcome center, and they're only, like I said, they're right on Hancock Street, a few yes. doors down. So, great partnership. We even had some art displayed in the welcome center mm. um, over the summertime from some local artists. Yep. So, yeah, great partnership. Very good. Sounds like it's going to be another active year. It's definitely going to be an active year. We're looking to probably add some retail at the Welcome Center. People are always looking for small souvenirs okay. and things that they can take home to friends and family. Um, so we hope to incorporate that this year at Excellent. the Welcome Center. Um, again, discoverquincy.com is yes. uh, your central uh, location for all things Quincy. And you can follow us on all of social media channels okay. such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All right. Thank you so much, Dagny. Have a wonderful 2023 tourism season. Thank you. You too. Thank you very much. Just enough time to uh, check the forecast for you for the rest of the day. Today, it's a wintry mess out there with some light snow accumulating, maybe a coating to an inch by this evening. Temperatures hovering in the mid-30s, down to the uh, upper 20s this evening. It'll quiet down tomorrow with some clearing mid-30s. Rain arrives Sunday night with highs Sunday in the mid-40s, and the rain will wrap up by Monday afternoon. Kind of blustery to Monday highs again in the mid-30s. Thanks again to Dagny and Ashley for joining us today. Thank you. For Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you to our crew. Thank you for watching. Monday here on the program, uh, Lauren Grenier from the Quincy Animal Shelter will join us. Meantime, head out to our website anytime. It's QATV.org. You'll find our latest news, information, programs, video on demand, live streaming, and a whole lot more. For all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great weekend.